everybody. Welcome back to the Rochester Local Podcast. Really happy to have you here in our Rochester Local Studio in our lower level of our home in Northeast Rochester is actually where we currently are. And before we get started, a huge thanks to the Edit Shop for their styling services for making our set look beautiful for our Rochester Local Podcast. Today, I am joined by the one and only Tiffany Alexandria. Hello, Tiffany. Hi, Becky. How are you? I'm good. How are you? Good. Thanks so much for coming by. Of course. So tell us, well, first of all, tell us how long you've lived in Rochester. Okay. And then tell us, tell me, because I can't remember. How did we meet? So I've been in Rochester for five years. I moved here to Rochester from um, Taipei, Taiwan. Mm-hmm. So it's a big change. Yeah. Um, how did we meet? I think... We met at Blue Duck when, yeah. like, maybe the first or second year that I moved here, yeah. and you were hanging out at the bar, and I was hanging out at the uh-huh. bar. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I think it was one of those things, like, oh, I th- I'm i pretty sure I know that girl, because you're Choo Choo Kachoo online. Yes. And I was like, I just need to meet her. And then the rest, as they say, is history. So tell us about Choo Choo Kachoo. Yeah, so Choo Choo Kachoo is a food blog slash photography studio. Um I'm Taiwanese, so obviously obsessed with food, and I love to eat. <laughs> um, so when I moved here, I wanted to do something that's more sustainable and like everything, everybody loves something everybody loves. So I decided to go into do more food, and then re- learned that a lot of people don't really know what Taiwanese food is mm. or Taiwanese culture is. So um, Chu Chu Kachu turned into uh, focusing on Taiwanese cuisine culture. And in the meantime, I just love taking photos of food. So I take a lot of food photos in restaurants or of my own recipes, mm-hmm. my mother's recipes, my grandmother's mm-hmm. recipes. Oh, I love yeah. that. So you can find Tiffany at Choo Choo Kachoo on Instagram. And a side note that your steam buns are one of my favorite foods ever, like yes. in the history of ever. Um, and for my 40th birthday, you brought me not one but two pans of them and i didn't let anyone else <laughs> i think i actually did let aj you didn't have one. share <laughs> no no they're like my favorite thing ever so anyways well we're really happy to have you on the rochester local podcast and as you know on this podcast we ask questions of our guests that our readers have submitted and so you oh. are gonna have some questions okay um, these are just kind of randomly selected but they're all about kind of rochester and Sounds you. good. So here we go. All right. What makes you good at your job? What makes me good at my job? Mm-hmm. Um, I'm a perfectionist. Uh, so <laughs> so that's like a blessing and a curse, right? It is a blessing and a <laughs> curse. So I and I am very food obsessed, obviously. So I want to dig into all the little details, mm-hmm. and I want to know everything about everything that I'm shooting or like recipe creating, and I also am blessed that I grew up in Taiwan, which is very um, diverse isn't really the word to to use, but also is. Um, We have a lot of influence from around the world. um, And I grew up in the larger city. So Mm -hmm. like been exposed to a lot of things. And I'm just always curious to learn more and attention to detail sometimes sometimes I don't care but <laughs> so you can really let it go when you need to maybe yeah right? and um I study design so that's mm-hmm. a bonus too that is a huge bonus and mm-hmm. I think for the readers too are the viewers hello the viewers we should uh let you know that Tiffany actually uh orchestrated and organized the night market so if you were um, able to go to the night market last summer or the summer before. That was all Tiffany. So we have her to thank for the excellent event. Um, so, okay. <laughs> Fitting question. What <laughs> Rochester d- event do you love and why? <laughs> um, obviously, I'm biased, but I love the night market because mm-hmm. during COVID, I uh, wasn't able to go home, wasn't able to travel home. Mm-hmm. And I really, really, really miss the night market. Mm-hmm. Um, just the food, then the people, and yeah. just the vibrancy of a market in the evening like that. Yeah. Just has something mm-hmm. has something magical about it, right? Mm-hmm. So I love the night market, and I was really happy um, the way it turned out and yeah. how the community 
Rochester came out in support, and that was really heartwarming. Loved that event for sure. Love that event, <laughs> and I loved personally. I loved the emphasis on smaller, more diverse um, vendors that you really worked really hard. You personally would work with these people to come um, figure out how they could vend their foods and these sorts of things. So that yeah. was really exceptional. I think it's to me. I wanted really to show what Rochester is. Um, most of our vendors you don't really see around Rochester, but they all live here, mm -hmm. right? This is our community. And yeah. I just wanted to put them on a platform, a larger platform, mm -hmm. so everybody sees them and appreciate them yeah. and know that their ideas are worth it and people will support it. Absolutely. It yeah. was the best. Loved it so much. All right, next question. Best Rochester adventure you've been on? Best Rochester adventure I've been on in Rochester, or like, Let's say or like, like surrounded, surrounded. Like say like thirty miles. Thirty miles. I don't even know how far thirty miles is. But. Like to Red Wing, probably. <laughs> oh, okay. And then maybe down to like Spring Valley, maybe. Okay. Yeah. Oh, best Rochester adventure. That's a hard one. There are so many. Uh -huh. Um. And you like adventures. So. I love adventures, uh -huh. so I'm always looking for new adventures. Yep. I think. Um, maybe going to farms. Oh yeah, that's great. That yeah, yeah, that makes I, sense. Yeah, when you say, yeah, because I love food and I yeah. want to know where food comes from and yeah. who grow these food in yeah. the local community, right. right? Yeah. And when I worked with uh, Rochester Farmers Markets, we I got to go on inspections <laughs> sure like like uh let me come and check out your food. yeah click, 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 and yes, meet you. yes exactly yeah, yeah. <laughs> so those are probably some of my favorite adventures being mm -hmm. able to learn what grows here yeah who grows it yeah and how it's done right and just magical to me like what can grow uh-huh in cold minnesota weather right yeah right yeah because you know, we, we do have a restricted growing season and what we can grow, but what we can grow, we do really well. And it can be, you know, there's lots of different things. Yeah. So that's a good, that's a, that's a good answer. All right. It's state night. Where are you going? Date night. Um, that's a hard one. This one's hard. We work too much. Yes. <laughs> You're always, what would Sean say? Sean would say Sean is, Sean is my husband, mm -hmm. the Nazi woodpecker. Mm, yeah, the uh, Nazi, the Nazi woodpecker, woodpecker yeah. would say, "Hey, let's go to Otori. You have some warm sake." Uh -huh, <laughs> that's, that's actually good, yeah, what he Otori would say. for warm warm sake. So yeah. that's a good answer. Yeah. Okay. So let's see. Ooh, if you could bring one amenity to Rochester, what would it be and why? What is the amenity? Like a service or um an attraction mm. or a restaurant or oh it's hard yeah there's so One. many things too many things that i want mm -hmm. <sighs> so okay i have a good yeah. answer i think so like a food hall slash market concept uh. but with night market vendors so like oh, BIPOC yeah BIPOC entrepreneurs we need like an incubator space mm -hmm. for BIPOC entrepreneurs especially in the food world because the ex um, entry the access is hard yeah. and we just need more of that and for them to be able to grow and a place for me to go eat <laughs> <laughs> I love that so um, just this past week I was up in the North Loop in Minneapolis, and I went to almost, I feel like, exactly what you're expressing. Grays? Yes, I went to Grays. Grays And is Grays great. had um, Union Monk Kitchen. Yes. It had Soul Bowl. It yeah. had, there was a barbecue shop. Yeah. There was a wine bar. Uh, oh, for sure. Yeah, yes. it was just amazing. So, like, something like that, but plus um, more, like, food product. Yes. So, like, a little market yes sort of as well um just so, so like they... people have a uh, share community uh com community not community commercial kitchen space yeah mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah but that's... also have like food stalls that are ready to eat food so they so can both. produce their yeah their food product in a commercial kitchen yes. with to yes. sell to distribute to sell. and also have fresh 
ready to that. eat food. It's mm-hmm. a great idea. Let's make that happen in Rochester. All right. Yeah. Yeah. You and me. Let's just do yeah, it. Let's we've just got, do it. We don't, we've got loads of free time. <laughs> um, me <Need> money. <laughs> I know. Okay. So this is a good one. What's oh. your go-to karaoke song? Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> do you do karaoke? We can skip the question. I don't think I have a go-to. I can't remember. It's been so long. So maybe we need like a good like Asian style karaoke bar. Yeah, we too. need like a KTV. Yes, that's what we need. That like would be really it's been great. five, six, six years mm-hmm. since I've been to a KTV. So oh. I don't know how to answer. I will that. say though that the karaoke scene is totally warming up. In yeah, Rochester. I know. There's a Charlie's and a Thesis. I know. And a couple other. Places I need an article too. about it. So maybe we need to go. And, yeah. And then we you can determine go. what your go-to. Okay. Is. Yes. <laughs> All right. Okay, we're gonna do one last one. Okay. What is one random ec- or eccentric fact about yourself? Uh, I have too many. <laughs> Choose one. Choose one. Mm-hmm. Uh. The Rochester Local Podcast is sponsored by First Alliance Credit Union. First Alliance Credit Union is Rochester's original credit union and has been helping the members of our community achieve their financial goals since 1932. Today, First Alliance Credit Union serves almost 20,000 members across the five Southeast Minnesota counties of Olmsted, Dodge, Goodhue, Wabasha, and Winona. Anyone who lives, works, worships, owns a business, or attends school within these five county communities is eligible to open an account at First First Alliance Credit Union. Depositing $5 is all it takes to open your account at First Alliance Credit Union. You can learn more and open your account online at firstalliancecu.com or visit one of their six local branch locations today. First Alliance Credit Union is federally insured by NCUA and an equal opportunity lend. I'm actually an introvert. Oh. Are you one of these extroverted introvert yes yes i am what's a technical term um i think they call them an ambivert really have you heard about this no i haven't heard about this i guess it's like where you you're an introvert but you can present yourself yeah. as extroverted when need be yes would you say that's what it is yes 100 percent. So, so you recharge at home being alone yes i recharge at home and when i tell people this that i like i really I get really anxious in crowded places. And I really don't enjoy going to crowded places. Mm-hmm. And then people will tell me, but you organize the night market and oh, there's right. so many people there. I was like, yeah. <laughs> About that. About that. <laughs> <laughs> so you needed a lot of rest time then. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> well, okay. So we learned all about you um, and really uh I mean, that makes a lot of sense. Especially, I love that answer about going and seeing the farms. Um, But so another thing that we want to do on the Rochester Local Podcast is we want to go back in history. You know, we're talking about how we live as locals now. Yeah. But I want to talk about how we how people lived as locals Mm -hmm. back in the day. So my mom, Chris Weens, who is a historian she loves history loves has studied it you know family trees and ancestry and these sorts of things she uh, has been researching through the history center and pulled a couple of news articles of how people lived 100 years ago whoa. this week in january whoa 1923 100 years ago so wow i thought this one was really interesting i'm going to read a little excerpt <clears throat> from the january 10th 1923 Rochester record. In the evening, the YMCA was the meeting ground, and a livelier group never met. The ladies' basketball game was the star attraction of the evening. For obvious reasons, it is not safe to announce the score. We're going to come back to that. Games between the young men resulted in a victory by a score of 7-9 to nine playing basketball. The juniors put up a lively boxing match and a real chariot race making use of kitty cars proved to be exciting. A most unusual and excellent exhibition of tumbling was presented by Carl Engelbart of Chicago, who is visiting at the home of his cousin. Okay, so I feel like there's a lot to unpack there. Yeah, so it's a big sports event, it sounds like. Apparently. More than, more than just basketball. Yeah, so it was like at the YMCA and... Probably not the location that it was just was at. at yeah. I don't know where my mom. I guess my mom could figure that out. But so they had basketball, 
kitty car races and a tumbling exhibition all just like for young people boxing um but i think the two things that stood out to me was the basketball score was seven to nine how did how <laughs> because we've got basketball scores that are like way up there in like the yeah. hundreds right or right like at least the upper the, the yes. rule change yeah. sometime but i think the, the one thing that's the most interesting to me is that they couldn't report the score of the ladies game for obvious reasons for obvious reasons, <laughs> I, <laughs> what did it say for like the ac- for like it didn't did it say anything about safety? No, it just says for obvious reasons. Oh, for obvious reasons, it is not safe to announce oh, the right. score. Why do we not think it was safe? Was there a massive crosstown rivalry between the women, like if and the men? <gasps> oh, maybe that maybe that is it. <laughs> Oh my god! Women can score higher than men. Ha. I don't know, but I kind of love this idea of like a. Uh, just like a sporting event like hey come on come on down we'll do a pickup game of basketball we're gonna put grown adults in mini kitty cars and like race them around um a boxing match sure it so sounds sell, great honestly sell some food sell yeah. some drinks i go there, to that i go to that i totally would do yeah. are there any boxing matches that goes on in rochester currently i mean i think there's mma that comes to yeah, the, yeah. that specific center but right. i well, that's different. That's There's not no like... boxing matches. I just imagine like those old school oh like my gosh, posters yes. of the guys like, hey, you stick yeah. them up, you know? Yeah. Um, yeah. So we'll have to figure that out. But OK, before you go, okay. um, we want you to put your sticker on our sticker board. OK. So from last episode, we had, you know, that we put sticker. on the oopsie, the Rochester local sticker. This one was created a couple of years ago when um, Rochester Mom, now Rochester Local, sold merch. And it was created by my husband, AJ. So that was the first so sticker. So talented. I know. It's my, like, favorite good Minnesota old, sticker. It's good so old great. AJ. The mugs, too. I still yeah, love the we, mug. I drink with mugs. it every day. It's huge. Probably because it... I like that mug because it's like a 16-ounce mug. mug of coffee. Yeah. Yeah. So, More coffee. All right. What's your sticker? What are you going to add? Um, Any sticker? Any sticker. I have so many, though. Um, okay, fine. I'll put my... While she's looking, if anybody wants to send in a sticker, we can send it in to me. We're going to fill this whole board full of stickers, local businesses, organizations you want to promote. You can send your sticker to Rochester Local, 2209 Fifth Avenue Northeast, Rochester 55906. And send it in, and perhaps we'll talk All about right. it. Let's put a Chateau sticker on it. Ooh, perfect. Okay, tell us about the Chateau. So the Chateau is a historic theater mm-hmm. in downtown Rochester, and I think it's super cool, and I love the marquee. Mm-hmm. Everybody loves the marquee. Yes, everybody loves it's the marquee. It's gorgeous. It's right in the Peace Plaza. Yeah, it's right in the Peace Plaza, and they just read to open it. So there are more programmings and events coming up Yeah, for the Chateau this Threshold year. Threshold Arts is in there. Yeah, yeah Threshold mm-hmm. Arts is managing it, um, and I drew... The art of the marquee. Oh, well done. So Look people can write their own messages on it. Oh, fun. Yeah. Oh, so. fun. Okay, so slap it on the board, oh, and then we'll have to have you leave a note before you leave. Oh, God. You got it? Yay. Okay. Anywhere? Yep. Put it right on. Jew. Awesome. All Here right. we go. Well, Tiffany, thanks so much for being here today. Yeah, thank Loved you for having, having me. you on the Rochester Local Podcast. And hello, my friends. Thank you so much for joining us for another episode of the Rochester Local Podcast. We're so glad you were able to give us a listen or a watch. We're thankful for all of your support as we launch this new endeavor. I'd love to hear from you. If you have any suggestions or things you'd love to see on the show, please email me at becky at rochesterlocal.com. I would love to hear from you hear what you have to say this upcoming weekend is february 10th through the 12th and it is love month we're definitely seeing some more activities on the calendar upcoming this weekend february 10th there is a galentine's event at janky gear from 4 to 7 p.m janky gear is an outdoor equipment and clothing consignment shop right on broadway super fun shop there You can stop into janky gear with your gals. Enjoy light refreshments and scratch-off deals. Find the perfect gift for that outdoorsy person in your life or treat yourself. 
February 11th. Got a couple of events here that I want to highlight. It's the Friends of the Rochester Public Library Winterfest sale. We love this used bookshop right in downtown connected to the library. The Winterfest sale is 10 a.m. to 5.30 p.m. You can shop for used books at great prices, nonfiction and fiction for all ages. They will also have an abundance of good quality kids books at this sale. And the best part, all proceeds benefit the Rochester Public Library. Again, on February 11th, it is the mindfulness hike at Oxbow Park and Zolman Zoo from 2 to 3.30 p.m. Join a naturalist on a stroll through the park to try out some mindfulness techniques. Learn how being immersed in nature can benefit your health. Meet at the nature center and dress warm as you won't be walking fast or far. And another event on February 11th is the Sweets and Sweats at Little Thistle Brewing, 12 p.m. to 8 p.m. Little Thistle's partnered with McKay Sweets, Sauna Life, more on that in a second, and Firebrick Bread to bring everything you need all in one place. McKay Sweets will be holding a cookie decorating class, and then Sauna Life, which is Rochester's only first, I think, Mobile Sauna will have their mobile unit at Little Thistle so you can have a relaxing steam with your loved one. Super excited about that. I'm starting to see lots of sauna life around on the socials. So make sure you're looking out for that. And then of course, Fire Brick Bread will be here at Little Thistle serving up delicious pizza all day. One last event on February 11th that I wanna highlight is the Dinner on the Bluff towards a Minnesota Driftless Hiking Trail. That's going to be at Eagle Bluff Environmental Learning Center down in Lanesboro. And this is super cool. I want everyone to know about this. My friend Marty Walsh is the quote unquote instigator behind the Minnesota Driftless Hiking Trail. And he's going to speak on the effort to develop a 110 plus mile backpacking focused trail from Chatfield to the Mississippi River through Minnesota's Bluff Country, also known as the Driftless Area. Marty's going to cover the history of the effort to build a trail in the region, as well as why the group sees such a demand for more long distance hiking in the area. This is a really cool concept. I'm super excited for Marty and all the work that he's really been putting towards this driftless hiking trail. It's really going to be a backcountry style hiking trail, exploring the driftless bluff country and really inspired by the Appalachian Trail, Superior Hiking Trail, Ice Age Trail and others. Um, they're really in the early stages of development. So if you head to that dinner, you'll You'll be able to hear more and support the efforts of Marty Walsh and others in that Minnesota Driftless Hiking Trail. All right, that's it for this event's weekend highlights. There are tons more events. You can see them on our calendar. That's rochesterlocal.com slash calendar. You can also submit your events. That can be rochesterlocal.com slash calendar slash community slash add. You can add all of your events for the community and make sure you check out our calendar. It's got a lot of events. Usually there's at least 25 events listed for the weekend. Tons of th fun things to do. We'll be highlighting events every week. So make sure you get your event on there for a chance to be highlighted. Thanks so much for joining us here at the Rochester Local Podcast. We look forward to seeing you next week. <laughs>